Patrick, can you share what the current U.S. Indo-Pacific strategy is? I believe you hosted an event with Eli Ratner, the um, Assistant Secretary for Defense for Indo-Pacific Security Affairs. Assistant Secretary of Defense for Indo-Pacific uh, Security Affairs, Eli Ratner, and uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense, uh, Lindsey Ford, who covers South and Southeast Asia in the Pentagon, uh, were hosted uh, by me and, and uh, Rebecca Heinrichs at Hudson Institute the other day. But the highlights for me were that both Eli and Lindsay stressing integrated deterrence, stressing the lattice work of, uh, of allies and partners that they're building up so that you have this uh, three levels of activity. One of them is national strengthening. The second, second is bilateral uh, sort of strengthening. And the third one is sort of the many lateral and multilateral dimensions of this, not just involving the U.S., but often it's countries like Japan uh, working with others or uh, India or Australia working with others with or without the United States. Um, it's an impressive array of measures that have been uh, boosted by uh, the Pentagon in recent months uh, in terms of announcements. Uh, this week, you have the Australia-UK-US announcement after 18 months of studying how to proceed with a nuclear-powered submarine and high technology for uh, Australia, working with the UK and the US. Um, there's, a, there's a plan now for the submarines that's very ambitious. How do you feel the role of the Philippines and Japan will come in terms of deterring China? What's happened in the Philippines in terms of announcing four new uh, access sites for the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, um, while that still has to be worked through in terms of domestic politics and vetting inside the Philippines, it's clear that all of these new facilities will be around uh, the northern uh, main island of Luzon, uh, around the South China Sea, in other words, around the potential flashpoints uh, with China, uh, including the southern approaches to uh, any Taiwan contingency. Uh, what Japan's been doing in terms of announcing uh, its own defense transformation, uh, very much boosted by China's assertiveness, but also Russia's aggression against Ukraine, uh, is very impressive what the Kishida administration is doing. Korea, Japan making uh, a rapprochement now, uh, and strengthening not only bilateral ties, but trilateral ties is uh, is almost earth shattering if it can be fully implemented. And even if not fully implemented, it's still an impressive uh, forward progress being pushed by Seoul uh, with Tokyo support and definitely with Washington support. Um, what the Quad is doing in terms of high technology uh, in India, looking about the thinking about the Indian Ocean and strengthening that uh, sort of linkage uh, in the Indo-Pacific is also very impressive. So there's no shortage of uh, sort of uh, developments um, building on this, again, lattice work of allies and partners, building on the concept of integrated deterrence by which the Pentagon usually stresses two things. One of them is first just integrating especially the new domains of space and cyberspace and electronic electromagnetic warfare into our own uh, command and control. And that's uh, sort of personified by uh, the joint uh, all domain command and control um, emphasis within the Pentagon. And then it's really integrating allies and partners in a way that we've not done in the past. What's behind this um, urge to boost allies and partners and, as you mentioned, integrated deterrence in the past few months? It's a growing concern that China might use force um, either to enforce a blockade against Taiwan or to actually use even more uh, assertive uh, measures to, for instance, seize an offshore island um, or otherwise uh, just resort to greater coercive action uh, around China's periphery. So deterring Chinese aggression uh, is the main driver of U.S. Indo-Pacific policy right now in the short term. The long term, it's still very much oriented toward uh, technological competition. But because there is this growing concern that in this decade, China could miscalculate, could uh, sort of uh, decide that this is the moment um, to unify uh, Taiwan, something that uh, Xi Jinping emphasized uh, as recently as today. And, um, you know, that is what is driving the need for the Pentagon to show that even while it supports Ukraine's effort for self-defense against Russian aggression, the Indo-Pacific is the primary theater, China's the pacing threat, and deterring conflict in the first place. In your conversations with the Assistant Secretary, how confident is the Pentagon and the U.S. on deterring China? 
from a Taiwan invasion? Well, you can read in the papers that there is a range of views from both uniformed officers and civilians working in the Pentagon or around the Pentagon. But I must say, uh, Eli Ratner talks a very strong, confident game. I think Under Secretary Colin Cole, um, Deputy Secretary uh, Kath Hicks, and the Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin all uniformly um, are quite confident that they are doing what is necessary uh, and sufficient to keep deterring uh, uh, China's aggression. But you do see comments uh, from Indopaycom, Admiral Aquilino, for instance, uh, as well as some of the generals like General Menahan, who was uh, reprimanded, in fact, by, for uh, predicting conflict in the next couple of years, um, you know, taking a, a, a not, it's not that it's lacking confidence, but uh, it's more wary about what China might do still in the relatively, in the short term during their tour of duty. And that's where, and that's understandable because, you know, someone like Admiral Aquilino is there for a few years in charge of that command. Uh, he wants to make sure that deterrence on his watch, not the next watch, uh, is stopped. Whereas uh, the Office of the Secretary of Defense is working not just for the short term, but also thinking longer term uh, about how deterrence can be pushed uh, well into the next decade. And indeed, Admiral um, I mean, Dr. Ratner uh, stressed the fact that uh, he really does think they are doing what's necessary to deter conflict from happening in the Indo-Pacific in this decade. 